are a sword giver. God will cause all favor to abound to you so that you have all sufficiency in all things and may have an abundance for Amen. every good work. The gospel is a good work, spreading the good news. But there are other people, organizations that are doing good works. Amen. He said, that's why I give you favor. That's why I want you to reap a harvest. So you have an abundance, an overflow, an excess, a surplus, so you can give to those people who are doing good works. I want to do more giving to those uh, organizations, kind of like St. Jude, because my God, and I share this with the students, no parent, no parent should have to bury their child. No parent. I can't imagine what it would be like to have a child five, six years old taken to the cancer treatments. I know it. What, what, what do you say to them? I mean, I think, I think life isn't fair. You, you have, and not only that, the pain that, you, that they go through, but as a parent, that, that must rip your heart out. And so, you have people who say, no, we will serve them, we will, we will help them, we will give them the treatment at no cost to the parents. And so God says, that's why I want you to be in a position. The same thing I told Abraham, I want to bless you so you can be a blessing. I'll give you favor. I'll give you an abundance. Hey, I'll give resources to people who I trust. Those who I know when I speak to them about giving, they'll do it. So you can help support those who are doing a good work. See, that's the purpose behind giving and being generous. And so sometimes the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, the Holy Ghost just doesn't speak to you about laying hands on someone. The Holy Ghost doesn't just speak to you about running and dancing. And the Holy Ghost doesn't just speak to you about you being blessed and the things that's just going to happen in your life. Sometimes, and we rarely hear him, but sometimes he talks to us about what we can give to others. The Holy Ghost will always speak to you about you. He talks to you about how you can bless others. Yes. And so that's what Paul said. Hey, he, we, we, we need to be givers. We need to be generous. Make up your mind. He said, make up your mind. What you will give. He says, God loves it. When the giver delights in the giving, God can pour on, pour on, notice this, pour on blessings in astonishing ways. That you're ready for everything and anything, or that you're just ready to do what needs to be done. So give it in generosity. Involves the principle of sowing and reaping, giving, and generosity is what God expects us to do. Hey, we want to be just like that. Be a giver. Giving in generosity allows God to pour on blessings to us in astonishing ways. Have this verse here in the Bible it says in Proverbs 11 25. I love how it reads out the message. He says, The one who blesses others is a Abundantly blessed. Somebody say abundantly blessed. Abundantly. Oh yeah, the one who blesses others though. Not just wait for a blessing, but the one who blesses others is abundantly blessed and those who help others are helped. God, if you please help, help me Jesus. Help me like you said you would. Please help me. Help my family. Help my, my children. Help my, my job. Help my money. Please help me. Don't you see me in this situation? I pray that thing too. But he said, listen, if you want to be helped, one thing you can do is start looking to help others. Start looking to be a, a blessing to others. And we said Wednesday, there is a biblical precedent behind this. Bible said there was a poor widow in the Old Testament. Poor husband passed away. Single income provided, not there. Told the prophet, listen, we, he said, prophet said, give me a meal. He said, listen, we, we're just going to eat our last meal and we're going to die. Prophet said, give that meal to me. Uh, just for a moment, I, I know it's not easy. Don't think about your circumstances. Go ahead and give me a meal. The Bible says she immediately got her eyes off her own problems and she helped the man of God. Oh my God, something broke through in her life. Yes, sir. Something supernatural. And the Bible says God started to pour blessings on her in astonishing ways. The Bible says that she ate for many days. This was her last meal. She was a giver. She stopped just thinking about her own situation. 
She moved to a place, and I know it's hard, of selflessness. The power of God hit her hand. The Bible said the oil didn't cease it. She ate for many days. God many times provides us. Again, is, is lavish with his blessings when we're selfless, when we're a giver, when we're generous. And so we see that God will pour out on us any and everything. He will pour out blessing to us in astonishing ways. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed. Pastor Graham, is there any, is there any other biblical example about this? Yes, yes, there is actually, because we said this about our father Abraham. The Bible says he was blessed. But keep in mind, Abraham, I want to say, is the first biblical account of someone prior to the law, prior to when it was mandated and it was expected for the children of Israel to give tithes and offerings. The Bible said hundreds, hundreds of years before, there was a man named Abraham. Abraham, he paid tithes to Melchizedek. He honored God with giving and generosity. He, he was selfless. You can even take it back to, to Cain and Abel. The Bible said Abel gave God his best, the first. But notice what happened. The Bible said Abraham, he brought his tithes. Abraham, he gave to God. And the Bible says, son, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you to be a blessing. And in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Let me tell you, I'm just saying, that man was a tither. That man was a giver. That man was generous. God poured out blessings on him. Under a lesser covenant. By the way, Jesus hadn't come yet. Oh, hey, hey so our redemption hadn't been secured. He didn't even have the Holy Ghost as such, but he was a giver, he was a generous, and the Bible said God poured out blessings on him. That's why the Bible says, he who blesses others will be abundantly blessed. In France, Abraham was abundantly blessed. Because I'm going to bless you like nobody else. You all the families of the earth will be blessed. I will bless you so we can be a blessing. And at, at the end of the day, that, that's our goal because we don't want to just be blessed to show off. We don't want to be blessed just to impress our church friends with our testimony and all the new stuff we have. No, at the end of the day, we want to be blessed so we can be a blessing. We yes. want to be blessed so we can leave a spiritual legacy. We want to be blessed so we can be a blessing to our family, our children, and those in the body of Christ. We want to be blessed so we can pay the gospel forward. So the same opportunity we had to hear the gospel will be afforded to someone else because someone did that for us. Yes, sir. That's what giving generosity is about. And this is what Paul challenged the church at Corinth to do. I have one more quote here. I want to. Oh, uh, you don't can't say amen. You say ouch. Praise God. Praise God. George Paul. He said, "God judges. He judges. He judges what we give. He judges what we give. Come on. By what we keep. <laughs> come on. Come on. You know. Again, he judges what we. It is not how much of my money I can give to God because you know we're not owners, but just managers, stewards. God owns everything. It's not how much of my money I can give to God, it's how much of God's money I can keep for myself. Uh, and so he says, God yep. judges us not by what we give, but by what we keep. Come on. And I'll prove it to you, don't ever take my word for it. We saw this week in Bible study. The Bible said Jesus, he was at the temple, and he actually was paying attention to how people were giving. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. And I believe Jesus still pays attention yes. to how and what we give. Yes. Scriptural reference, Hebrews 7, 8, the Bible says, men who die receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives. You know, right now, God received the tithes, offerings in heaven at the right hand of God the Father. But in that day, the Bible says Jesus was in the temple and at the treasury, and he watched how people gave. My Lord. And there was the wealthy who gave, and you had this poor widow who gave. Hey, both gave. Yes, sir. Both gave. But it's not about what we give, but it's what we keep. Jesus said, this poor widow gave more than they are. And the disciples said, Jesus, can you count? <laughs> like, can, can, you, can you do math? Come on. 
Because the, the, the wealthy, they give a whole lot more Come on, this poor widow. She gave two mites. Do you not know a mite wasn't even worth a penny? Come on. A mite is worth one eighth of a penny. It wasn't even a half a cent. She gave two mites, which amounts to a quarter of a penny. How in the world can Jesus say that this poor widow gave more than the wealthy? No, he said it's not about what you give, it's, it's what she kept. She didn't, she didn't have anything left on her. She, she made the biggest sacrifice. I personally believe this poor widow wasn't poor very long. <laughs> My Lord. But the Bible says, hey, God judges us. Not by what we give, but by what we keep. And again, this is bigger than money. I say this is close. I, I, re I remember, I was listening to a pastor on the way here in their live stream. I don't listen to everybody, but I, but I, I, I like this pastor. And this applies to church attendance. This applies to our being dedicated. It also applies to giving. And man, I love this question. I, I, you should see me on the I'm like, oh, that's right. Amen. Say it again. Say it again. I'm, 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 I'm the amen corner in the car. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm laughing. Like, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. And he said, church, if, if every member in the church was like you, if everyone in the church operated like you, if everyone was the, was the type of member that you were, what would the church be like? I was like, oh, <laughs> that's right. If, if everyone at LCC, if everyone in the body of Christ operated like you, where would the church be? Come on, sir. Where would the church be? Some of us, the church wouldn't even open some Sundays because we don't come every week. Come on. Some of us, the church would not have amount, enough money to stay open because we give maybe twice a year or we just give when it's convenient. If everyone in the church, hey, some of us, like we, you don't know when church would be open because some of us, you don't know when we come to church. Come on, sir. He said, if, if the church, if every, if every person in the church operated like you, where would the church be? How strong would that church be? And he said, he said, uh oh, it got real quiet. And I can show you, there was no one running around the church. There was no one. That, you can hear a pin drop, you can hear a pin drop. He said, if everyone was like you, what would the church be like? That applies to our, not only our giving, but our commitment, our, 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 our attendance, our, our, our passion, our dedication, not just to the church, but to, to God as well. And so, this guy says, you know, God, he does, he does judge us. Not by what we, by what we give by, but by what we keep. And, and that speaks volumes when you think about the subject of giving and generosity. And my prayer is that God, God will uh, challenge us. And I'll tell you what, you know, uh, every, every series that comes, God, God always deals with me too. You've got to believe that. You've got to know that. God always deals with me too. But this is what God wants for us in the body of Christ to be givers and to be generous. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all of the honor. Thank you, Lord, for helping us to examine what your word says. Help us, Lord, to be givers and to be generous. Lord, help us to be committed to giving to the kingdom, to your kingdom helping the spreading of the gospel. Help us to be better givers to our family, children, our brothers and sisters in Christ, and, and those who are doing a good work. Help us, Lord, not just to lay up for ourselves treasures on the earth, but help us to lay up the treasures on, in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for the people who came before us. They paved the way for us. They gave. Wow. So we can have a place to worship. They gave. So we can hear the gospel free of charge. They gave. Yes. So we can be introduced to you. Thank you, Lord. They left, they left. Those who came before us left such, yes. such an incredible, incredible, incredible legacy. Thank you, Lord. And, and we, we can't just let it stop with us. Yes. In the name of Jesus. 
help us, Lord, not just to be hearers of your word, but to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I shared this with you. I remember I talked about how I'll be preaching at my dad's church, but when I was there last time, I remember hearing, I think the church was like 139 years old, and I remember hearing the stories of how the church started. You had a group of slaves who just wanted a place to worship and didn't have anywhere to worship. And they would take their money and they, they pulled their resources together. And that was an amazing story. And they got together and bought, bought, a, bought a piece of land. I think once they purchased their freedom and uh, you know, laws changed, they, they were free and they were free to own property. And they, they purchased land and then they, they, they pulled they pool their resources together. And they, they built a church that's still standing today. They built a church, a place for them to worship. And as a result, a lot of people got saved. But someone had to put the time in the work, the effort, energy. They had the, 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 the sweat equity to help build and, and construct that facility. It took resources that they worked for. It happened. I thought about the, the Christian school, I'm, I'm, one of the schools I'm working at right now. I, I'm blown away how they were able to, I mean, they just, they got, they pulled their resources together, purchased land that they didn't know if they would need it or not, but with the growth of the area, they said, we better, we better purchase it just in case someone tries to take it, and you never know what was, someone will build next to us, and, and they had, had the resources to do it. This is not land sitting over there. I, I, I'm amazed, because you, they want to instill Christian values in, in their students. It's just amazing what people do when you listen to stories, you look at history, how people, they, they, they were committed to be givers to promote the gospel so lives can be changed and they all knew this is bigger than me. My Lord. This is bigger than me. Yes, yes. Same reason why people and parents they, they try to become owners and not just renters because they try to purchase property because they know they can pass it down to the next generation yes. because ownership is bigger than me. I know. It's going to be for my children and potentially their children as well. We have to have that same mindset as Christians as we invest into the gospel, our time, our effort, our energy, our resources, when we volunteer, tithes, offering. This is bigger than me. This is so yes. my daughters can hear yes. the gospel. This yes. is so they can be exposed to Jesus yes. because I have that opportunity. Yes. Someone thought enough about me. Yes. And I want a Ford, I want them to have that. Hey, so they can go to children's church yes. like I went to children's yes. church. So they can hear the gospel. So they can come and pluck out all the noise of the world and hear about the one and true God. Okay. Yes. yes. They can have. I want them to have that opportunity. I got 18 years with them. Yes. Yes. Some are you showing them that to seek godly character in their life. And so I'm going to give to the kingdom. I'm going to do what I need to do yes. to create a space for them to worship the one and true God. That, that's what our giving does. Tell that's what generosity does. At the end of the day, it's a lot bigger than us. It's about the kingdom. Yes. It's about reaching souls yes. for his cause. Bigger than dollars and cents. It's about creating a spiritual legacy. And that's what Paul had to remind the church of Corinth. Yes. About this, this, this is why we give. Yes, sir. This is why we give. That's why I, I, I vehemently oppose anyone who tries to talk you out of supporting the kingdom of God. This is why we do it. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus. Yes. So, Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, we thank God. We leave everyone here saved and rededication to church membership. We will streamline. We will talk more about what we will start doing more at the end of services. But before we get out of here, I want to just pray that God he will help us to become more dedicated to Him. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you. We yes. worship you. Help us to be more dedicated. Help us to be more committed to you. Help us, Lord, to see the big picture. Yes. The big picture. As it relates to our giving, yes. our sacrifices, yes. the time we invest yes. for you. Yes. Help us to be mindful of this. In Jesus' name, Jesus. we pray. Amen. 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 Somebody give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. And I. I. I worship you. I'm just before you. Oh, love you. It's love